Well, it's windy as hell today, but the cleanup's underway. Got various units of scrap, been recovered. That one there I'm just testing out. It's icy cold. I originally wrote low on it, but I don't think I ran it long enough. Now it's just nice and sweaty, it's working well. A little portable. That's been recovered, that's a new, new one. <coughs> Was. <laughs> it's all scrap. Got a cheap, nasty compressor in them. Good for spare parts. original bladeless fan. It's all China shit in case you're wondering why I'm chucking it out. Nasty. Yeah, looking much better now. Still got to play around in this weather wall, email air unit. Short block that came out of my car. Fire hoses ready for delivery, uh, probably tomorrow or the next day. Most of those tyres I'll just take down to the tyre shop and say, here, take these. They're on mag wheels and some of them are still good, but I'll never use them. Big VFD. Ah, I'm going to get into that side next. What a mess. I've got no idea what these things are used for, but I found them at the yard today. There's a whole drum full of them. I think they came from an SO refinery or other plant of some description. Gas plant. Seat is Delrin, 6000 psi at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 1000 at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a quick attachment for something. I'm guessing it's bottle filler. Maybe nitrogen or something. It's got, um, green for inert gas. There must be a bottle filler attachment or something. I don't know why they've got this little chamber on them. Um, that one there, 3000 mil, 3000 psi test. So 300 milliliter capacity, 3000 pounds test pressure, 20% tube. What's this? For use with DuPont, D-E-W-Pont apparatus. I'm guessing it means DuPont. C3 coolant bomb. Interesting. I cracked the valve on one of them in the yard and I think it still had about 2,000 pounds in it. I think it was deafening. I don't know what it was. It had no odour. I'm guessing since it had a green band on it, it was inert gas, maybe argon. And this one here is the same. It looks like it's got a piston inside it or something. That might pop out, I don't know. Got that. Two pressure gauges. Maybe there's two sides to it. They all go up to 2,000 psi. It's made by Haldatec, Melbourne. Serial number 18072. Now oh, what's this say? Can blow out if unscrewed. Removing end cap, tightening clockwise. Can't tell if that through bolt's covering it. Maximum sample stroke of the rod. I don't know. Sampling cylinder? Could be a sampling cylinder. I don't know what the rod's all about. 300 cc's. They all have their cu cubic centimetre capacity written on them. All I know is they're probably the makings of a neat little air gun. They've got a brand new rotary compressor sitting there. I reckon a brand new rotary should be able to do 700 psi. It's got to work out a little um, pop valve, instant release valve. Okay, I found some more markings on one of these. Uh, I think it was that one there. That little red strip there is actually a label and it says gas samples only. So they're a gas sampling cylinder. You screw it onto the bottle or whatever there. Fill the cylinder up and isolate it. Then when you get back to the laboratory this might have another snap-on fitting or something. And you snap onto the machine which analyzes the gas and tells you its purity, moisture content, that sort of thing. That's really neat. Um, they probably failed the absolute maximum test or something or the valve might leak so 
They've canned them. All I know is there's a 44 gallon drum full of them. Now at least it's not so windy today to continue the culling of Ed systems. Uh, I've got that really vaporative air or portable air conditioner outside still. It rained last night. Everything got a wee bit wet. Uh, yeah, it's not particularly good, but it doesn't matter. Give it a good wash. Aircon's on dehumidifying everything again. I'm going to move the Range Rover back over there, I think. Get some room to work. Electrolysis, electrolysis is still on, but the plates need a good clean, so... I might cancel that cleaning and uh, we'll just pull the cylinder head out and work on cleaning it up later on. That'll be a separate video. Right now, let's get this Range Rover moving and started. <laughs> I haven't started it since the test drive, so it'll be interesting. Alright, let's see if she wants to wake up this morning. interesting. Only firing on a couple of cylinders. Check the fuel level and everything. Oh, well that was an epic screw up on my behalf. I didn't quite quit the uh, distributor cut cap down last time I took it off. I left it off when it was warm and uh, just let any extra moisture come out of it after the drive and uh, yeah I must have forgotten to snap it down again so no damage done. I'm just going to clip it back on and try again. Hopefully it works this time. Alright, let's try that again with the distributor cap on properly. Better. A bit flattered on the other cylinders though. And on cold to tart still. high grade and injector cleaner, I think it's still cleaning shit out of the tank. That's the problem, it's pulling it through. So, the fuel filter and ignition gear next. It might help solve some of this problem. And get a proper compression tester as well, just in case. Oh, it's a fun of only a Range Rover. It spends more time off the road than it does on it. I just thought I'd give this thing a clean up change the fuel and put a good battery in it before I pass it on to its new owner. It at least used to look a lot worse than this before, but I love this stuff. It's a silicon based tyre shine, but it says you can use it on plastic mouldings and trims and other shit like that and it comes up beautiful. Get rid of that matte oxidised look. Makes everything slippery, but you just don't put it on your grips or your tyres or the treads. Good. It's going to drain the fuel and uh, yeah, give her a tr test run. Doesn't look like there's any water gotten into it. But I will drain it out from the carburetor end. Definitely old fuel. Got down there. Yeah, now I've disturbed it. The bloody fuel hose is leaking. Oops. Better repair all that. Ah, I figured I'd better do the fuel hoses. They're all gone to shit. Leaking. That one's gone hard. I think it used to be rubber. Rubber turn into plastic. 
Oh, well, that's all done. Keep that hose clamp and that's about it. Got one of those mini Repco fuel filters in it, that's all it needs. You just change them out, they're only $7 each, so just buy a new one when it's full. Yeah, we'll pull this thing up and we'll give it a start. I'm going to get going with a few other jobs today, so this will be one of the main things. Get this stuff on the trailer. This and the fire hose reels, and probably some of those old tyres and things that I've got, and get rid of them too. I've got to thin out the volume so I can make, it, make room for engines under the lean too. It's easier to roll them out from under there than it is to have be tripping over them in the shed all the time. I don't mind if they stay outside and nobody's going to be able to pinch them because they're so goddamn heavy. Not that they'd want to, they're pretty much stuffed. You wouldn't put them back in a car again. But yeah, let's start this thing up. Oh, that's right, I'll put another fan on it. I can't remember if that's still hooked up or not, but we'll find out. Alright, primed and ready to go. I'm just charging the little battery. So I'm running a big one at the moment. I really need to find one that actually fits in the battery box. I'm going to have to make a little battery box under this carry bar for a small motorcycle battery. But it's working. the wheels and everything when I got it first. <laughs> Turning crap off the exhaust. Yeah, that tire needs air. They're actually tubeless but they don't seal properly. I thought it felt a bit spongy. Still pretty neat though. Hmm. Yeah, I forgot how much fun that bike is. <laughs> it's even more fun when you got that heavy battery on the back. The RFN just loves to slide once you got that extra mass tied onto it. I should put a ratchet strap on it and see how far I can push it. <laughs> Probably end up upside down with the bike on top of me, but that's always fun. Well, I should conclude today's uh, culling of Ed systems. I've uh, got to run off and look at an air conditioner at the moment. The compressor's not starting. I've got a feeling it's just another run cap issue. Hopefully not a whole unit replacement. Um, band of the uh, week for today. I haven't done a band recommendation in a while, it's the Aerion again. The whole of uh, Into the Electric Castle is now online on YouTube, but I still recommend buying the album because it is just magnificent. You'd call it progressive metal or progressive rock. It's not as harsh or hard as some of their older stuff is. Uh, it's very easy listening, definitely. You'd almost hear it on radio if the radio wasn't so bloody obsessed with all this pop rubbish. Try listening to Nova 100 every day at work and it just makes you want to cut your ears off and eat them. It's really nasty stuff, but it's good to get home and listen to a bit of Aerion or uh, Iced Earth. I had the, al the uh, Gettysburg album when it first came out and I just found it all online again. So yeah, go look up some good music. Disregard all that pop crap and get into something with some real context and quality. Thanks for watching. <laughs>